Good evening, guys. Hi. So it's kind of late here. It's almost nine o'clock. So usually, you know, Mrs. Strange likes to be in bed by eight. So maybe you'll see this tonight or see it tomorrow morning. But this is uh, Send Your Elephant. And I have permission from Scholastic to read this book to you. Um, they've given all the teachers permission to read the book, any of their books for the next 30 days. So interesting. So we're gonna do another compare and contrast, and this is another fractured fairy tale, and this one is gonna be compared to Cinderella. So I'm hoping as you're listening and as we're going through, you're kind of figure out um, which ones are the same and what things are a little bit different as we go through, because that's really what we're gonna be working on as we go through. So it says, once upon a time, there was a lonely girl called Cinder Elephant. Cinder Elephant lived with her two cousins who were known as the Wortley sisters. They were horrible, mean, and smelly, and they had no table manners. They made Cinder Elephant do all the cooking and cleaning, and they never, ever said thank you. Cinder Elephant was sad and tired and fed up with being ignored. Can you see it? Can you see the word never? What did the author do there? The author did something with that word never. What did they do? Yeah. Emma took that word and she made it bigger so that you as the reader would make sure that you emphasize it as you read it. One day an invitation arrived from the palace. Prince Trunky had decided it was time he found a girlfriend. So King Saggy and Queen Wrinkly had invited all the girls in the neighborhood to the ball. The Wortley sisters were excited and started to plan what they would wear. If they are inviting all the girls, said Cinder Elephant, perhaps that includes me. Of course you won't be going, Cinder Irrelevant, laughed the Wortley sisters. Whoever would want you to dance with? What does irrelevant mean? Have you ever heard that word before, you're irrelevant? Well, if you're relevant, it means that you're important and that people want you and they care about you. So if you're irrelevant, it means that no one cares and no one wants you there. The day of the party ride and the Wortley sisters dressed up in their most fashionable clothes. Bye-bye, Cinderella, they said as they left the house. Don't wait up. We're bound to be home very late. Poor Cinderella sat all alone in the silent house. A big tear rolled down her trunk and plopped onto the floor. If you look at the word big on the next page, you're gonna notice that Emma, the author, also did the same thing. She made that word big again. She made the word big, big. And that's so that you emphasize it. Hey, squeaked a small voice. Watch where you drop those tears. I'm getting soaked. Cinderella saw a tiny mouse looking up from her crossly. What does it mean she looked up her crossly? She saw a tiny mouse looking up at her crossly. That's crossly, like me. Uh, I'm sorry, she sniffled. I was just feeling sad that I can't go to the party. Excuse me for asking, but who are you? Why, I'm your furry god mouse, of course, he exclaimed. And with the flick of his magical tail, he said. Okay, look here, I've got these three dots here. Do you remember what those three dots are set? mean and what what it's called that's right if you said it's an ellipse you're absolutely right and you know the purpose of that is to add some suspense to the writing so when the author puts that in there or you put that in your own writing that gives a little bit of suspense so that you make a little hesitation you shall go to the ball and look here so the author put one line on two pages so that shows you how important it is now Let's do some compare and contrast here. So yeah, they're both gonna go to the ball. So in the original Cinderella goes to the ball and in Cinder Elephant, she goes to the ball, but look at the difference. What's the contrast? Well, if you said that in the original Cinderella, she goes to the ball with a um, carriage, you are correct because here it's a limo. And if you look at the dress, it's just automatically on her, but in the original Cinderella, um, the mice actually made her dress. So this one, she just flick of a tail and there it was. Wow, you look amazing. Go to the party and enjoy yourself, said the fairy godmother. But, well, this is where the author made a funny, look what it says. And it says, 
and it's a big butt. Look what happened. Is that not funny? Oh, the author is so funny here. You must be home by midnight. So there's another lips there. And so, yeah, you can go, but if you're not home by midnight. So we have the same thing in both stories. So there we can compare both stories. They both know that they have to be home by midnight. So at the palace, Prince Trunky was bored. He didn't want to dance with any of the girls. He was worried they might get squashed. If only he could find someone a bit more his type. But wait, who was this vision of loveliness who had just walked in? Clear the floor, bellowed Prince Trunky. Looking up there. What does bellowed mean? Clear the floor, bellowed Prince Trunky. If you said like shouted or yelled, you're absolutely right. Wanna dance? He asked Cinderella as he accepted, swept her off her feet and onto the dance floor. Prince Chunky and Cinderella danced together for the rest of the evening. Who is that? Everybody asked Embersley. She looks a little bit, mm, but no, it can't be. She looks so good, and she's such a good mover, said the Wortley sisters. Cinderella had never been so happy. She didn't notice the time passing until suddenly the clock struck midnight. Oops, she exclaimed, I've got to go home. And she rushed from the palace, and she dropped one of her beautiful shoes. I notice on this page that there's the word can't, and I know we've been talking about that word in a lot of our groups. Does anybody know what the word can't stands for? What two words does the word can't stand for? If you said cannot, give yourself a pat on the head because that's exactly, it's a contraction. It means it makes up two words. Wait, what's your name? Prince Trunky called after her, but Cinderella had already gone. At his feet laid one of Cinderella's fabulous shoes. Then and there, Prince Trunky made a decision and Prince Trunky's decision carried a lot of weight. Did you get that pun? So, Prince Trunky's decision carried a lot of weight. Isn't the elephant big? So what does he carry around? A lot of weight. Picking up the stiletto, he declared, I shall find the girl with a foot who fits the shoe and I shall marry her. Now, does anybody know what a stiletto is? If you said a high-heeled shoe, you are absolutely right. So if you look at the shoe right here, that part, that makes what they call a stiletto. The next day, Prince Trunky began the search for the girls of his dream. He went from house to house, trying the fabulous shoe on every girl's foot. It fit no one. Will I never find her, sighed the prince. At last, he arrived at the warty sister's house. Give me that shoe, demanded one warty sister. It's bound to fit me. But of course, her little trotter was far too small for the gorgeous shoe. Let me have a ghost of the other sister snatching, and I'm Prince Trunky's one true love. But of course, it did not fit her either. Sighing quietly to herself, Cinder Elephant peeped shyly through the creek in the kitchen door. I think if you think about the original story, you could do a contrast here and a compare. The compare would be they both tried on the shoes and the contrast would be, I don't remember Cinderella peeking through a door. But whoops, she accidentally stepped into a bucket, knocked over the mop, bringing a pail of pots and pans, crashing and clattering down. Who is in there? asked the prince. Oh, nobody important, said the Wortley sister hurriedly. Taking no notice, Prince Trunky went to investigate. What does investigate mean? That's right, investigate means he went to go and look. Could it be you, asked the prince, slipping the lovely shoe onto Cinderella, Cinder Elephant's foot? It was a perfect fit. You are the one for me, cried the prince in delight. Cinder Elephant had never been so enormously excited in her life. Put 
Cinderelephant and Prince Trunky were married the very next day. And of course, they were hugely happily ever after. You notice this author used a lot of like words that describe big, hugely enormous. And that's making little puns about the elephants being so big. So this is another fractured fairy tale where we compared both stories. And if you think about the difference of the two and do the um, do the contrast, the really difference is the characters in the story. So it has kind of the same theme, but the characters are a lot different. If you do the um, comparison, the whole timeline's the same. You know, they went to the ball, you know, she, she was cleaning up, she went to the ball, she had to be home by midnight. So all of those things happen and then the prince found her and got a, a shoe fit and then they got married and they live happily ever after. So I'm hoping you enjoyed this story tonight. And so I'm hoping I get to see you all soon and have a great night, everybody. Bye, miss y'all.